about the rifle? I found this to be really interesting and something that I didn't know about the rifle that Leo Harvey Oswald supposedly used. All right. Now this is this is utterly fascinating because nobody really talks about this because for the first 20 years of the Kennedy case, everybody thought that this was, as they say, a fait accompli. If Oswald ordered the rifle, etc. Well, it didn't turn out until several years later after that, into the 90s, that people began to question that transaction. Because there are several things that are very irregular about the way the Warren Commission presents this thing. Uh, for, to, get, to give you one example, we're supposed to believe that Oswald ordered the rifle, I believe, on March 12th. The official story says he ordered it from Klein's Sporting Goods in Chicago which is over 700 miles away from Dallas-Fort Worth. Well, if you follow the, the, what the Warren Commission says, they would have you believe Oswald mailed this at about 10.30 in the morning on March the 12th. It flew 750 miles yeah. to Chicago. It was sorted at their main post office box. It was then distributed to their minor post office uh, station. It was then delivered to Klein's. Kleins then separated out all the stuff, the money orders from the cash and the checks, deposited it into their bank account in 24 hours. And I'm reading this, I go, wait a second. I pay my mortgage. It doesn't get there. It's in the same city. It doesn't get there in 24 hours, let alone get deposited into the account. So that's just one of the things that's hard to believe. The other thing is that if you read the Warren Commission, Oswald did not order that rifle in his own name. He supposedly had this alias named Idell. Well, the post office has regulations saying that we don't turn over merchandise to somebody who doesn't have their name on the P.O. box, all right? The question then becomes, how did that merchandise, in this case a rifle, actually get to the P.O. box if it actually was not in his name. And by the way, this is right in these postal regulations. You can, you know, you can actually download them certain places on the internet. So they violated that. You know, we're supposed to believe that this thing went 750 miles in, in a 24 hour period. Um, another important point, we have to believe that Oswald was at the post office when he bought the money order. He didn't mail it at the post office because it has a certain number on the envelope back in those days, which was before zip codes. You went by these, these area numbers. He didn't mail it at the post office. He then walked some like two and a half miles out of his way and put in a mailbox. This, and the whole time, by the way, he's supposed to be at work. So in other words, he, and on his time card. He's supposed to be at work when it's being mailed. Right. So his someone, time card has nothing in there about him leaving and then coming back, which is important because at that job that he had at the time, you went by job you were working on, okay, and you were accounted for two and a half hours on this, et cetera. So none of this is recorded at the place that he worked at. You know? So this whole transaction you know, has really, really come into question you know, of recent times. And my opinion today is I don't think Oswald ever ordered that rifle. You know? You think somebody else ordered it? I, I, I think that that, well, let me add one more point. It's the wrong rifle. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you wrote about that just like kind of blew my mind. I okay. Mean, it's the wrong rifle. And that's left out of his book all, like, I mean, Bugliosi. And by the way, and that's not in his book. No. Yeah, no, okay. It's the wrong rifle. Here, because we're gonna, he's going to explain to you now about the, the issue about the rifle. Besides all the issues that surround the delivery and the ordering of that rifle, which are problematic. Maybe yeah. could be explained away with a lot of work, but you still mm. could maybe. Then you get to this one, which is a hard one to but throw yeah, away. Yeah, right. See, if you believe the Warren Commission, the rifle that Oswald ordered was a 36-inch rifle, which is usually qualified as a carbine. The rifle that was supposedly found in the Texas School Book Depository is a 40 inch rifle that is classified as a short rifle. All right. Further, when the House Select Committee interviewed the gunsmith at Kleins, they asked him, did you put scopes on the 36 inch rifle? Yes. Did you put scopes on the 40 inch rifle? No. This rifle had a scope. Who put the scope on it? All right, it wasn't Oswald. All right, 
So in, the, in addition to all those things which are so problematic, how are you supposed to believe that they gave the guy the wrong rifle? One of the most explosive things that turned out in the early years was when Josiah Thompson, for his book Six Seconds in Dallas, went to see a guy named O.P. Wright, who was a security director at Parkland Hospital. He, it, he was supposed to have given the bullet, the magic bullet, CE-399, to the Secret Service that day. All right. Well, when Thompson went to interview him, he brought a picture of CE-399, which is a, a, what they, a round-nosed, copper-jacketed bullet. They call it a military-jacketed type of bullet. And so he said, is this the picture that you turned over to the, is this, is this the, a bullet rather, that you turned over to the Secret Service? He goes, no. He, said, he goes, that wasn't the bullet I turned over. And he, and he, since he's a security director, he opens up a drawer and he takes out a kind of lead colored, uh, what they call pointy edged kind of hunting round. He goes, that's the kind of bullet that I, that I gave to the Secret Service that day. And so Thompson in his book, in the, in the, um, the note says, if, if this is true, then it appears somebody substituted the bullet. And if that's true, then it looks like the Kennedy assassination was an inside job.